He saved lives, dreamed of defeating aging and creating a machine that would put an unmistakable diagnosis, offering the necessary treatment. Almost every day for 45 years a living human heart lay in need of help in his hands. The valve is done. Everything is good. We'll live. Heat it up to 36.7 degrees. Defibrillator. It is not shrinking. The first alarm. A little bit of adrenaline. Another shock. It is starting to shrink. Turn off the machine. Hope. Fear. Plea. Start working, please. Doctor, engineer, cybernetics expert, writer, public figure, scientist and thinker, professor and academician Mikola Mosov. Way to the heart. The road leads up to the hill. I go to work. Almost every morning I'm on my way. In my thoughts as well. Operations are done every morning. Everything has been thought out in details hundreds of times already. And I see people, trees and cars. I even hold some conversations in my mind. But all the time I remember all the operations which I conducted. Rubinsk Water Reservoir on the Volga River is one of the few artificial lakes on the planet. For decades, people told a terrible story from mouth to mouth about how people who didn't want to leave their houses chained themselves to their homes. And just like in some Hollywood movie, they eventually died. For the creation of a water reservoir, 5,000 square kilometers of the territory were flooded and more than 130,000 people had to be evacuated and relocated. Under the water, the stories of Russian villages rested. Somewhere there is the cradle of Mikola Mosov, the village of Olhava in the Vologod Oblast. The future surgeon was the son of a midwife. Mother brought up the boy alone, and they lived literally below the poverty line. Two of my relatives, my mother, a rural midwife, who worked there for 25 years and was the perfect woman, and my aunt on my father's side, who was also a midwife, were always a major part of my life. There were those of the people who were described as totally unmercenary. In particular, these were poor doctors who had next to nothing. And even if they had money, they gave almost all of it for their patients' needs. School in the city of Cherpovets, Vologod Oblast in Russia. Here, Amosov studied for the fifth grade. He had to live in the apartment of a friend of his mother. Every weekend, he walked 25 kilometers to his native village. It was then that a strict regime appeared. Morning wake up, school, lessons and reading. He apportioned money and products for every day. This is how one of the most important traits of character is formed, namely a systematic approach to just about any vital task. It was the year 1926. I lived very poorly. Indeed, my budget was 10 rubles a month. After school, there was technical school and then a wood mill in Arhangelsk. Amosov entered the extramural department of an engineering institute. He wanted to be an inventor and designed forest lane machines, but soon he chose to work in medicine. In the year 1935, I desperately did not want to go serve in the army. I 
For that reason, I entered the Arhangelsk Medical Institute, as it was the easiest for me. He studied only three courses and then already became a lecturer in the medical school. During these years, he dreamed of becoming a scientist. He was fond of physiology and even created a design of an artificial heart. I successfully passed the next exams in the spring. At the end of the year, I was rewarded with watches in my namesake. They served me until the middle of the war. I also sewed pants and tailored a uniform for myself, as I had no money to buy them and it was an interesting challenge for me. According to Amasov, he missed the overload of work. Therefore, he continued his studies in the extramural department of the Industrial Institute and created a design of an aircraft with a steam engine. Later, these skills were useful in the development of unique medical equipment. At first, I went to the medical institute in order to become a theorist, and then my destiny changed in such a way that I ended up engaging in surgery. On November 26, 1939, the USSR government sent a note of protest to Finland concerning the shelling, which according to the Kremlin was executed from the Finnish territory. Thus began the war between the states, which soon ended peacefully. But this event brought experience from martial medicine. It was then that a special instruction of Dr. Petro Kupriyanov appeared. The recommendations concerned surgeons who were working on the battlefield. The experience of the Soviet-Finnish war helped surgeons to save thousands of lives in the next round of the casualties of war. Amosov had not yet had time to get used to being at the hospital when the battles of World War II broke out in his native land. It was December 1943. I was a leading surgeon of a field mobile hospital with 200 beds and five doctors. We were located in the village of Horobichi. This was a large village with 2,300 wounded. We had a school and 400 houses, and we had to administer them medical aid, such as bandaging their wounds and urgently operating on some of the severely wounded. You can only imagine what the life was like. 2,300 were injured with only five doctors to attend them within a radius of about five kilometers. Despite these difficulties, we never gave up, because we were very well organized. We worked practically 24-7, having slept for only four hours a day. We did not let anyone to die of blood loss, recalled Mikola Amosov. However, in the days of the war, everyone who died on the operating table seemed to be the accuser in an invisible legal process. And it was quite depressing. After all, the surgeon wanted to save everyone, but he wasn't almighty. From time to time, he wanted to quit medicine and go to battle on the front. And after the case when one patient died from anesthesia, the fighter was intolerant of procaine. Amosov was completely desperate and decided to commit suicide. He had a couple of morphine pills in his hands, but everything had changed in one moment. The enemy is shooting at the front, and here I let a soldier die. He repeated when he was found and brought to life by a colleague. By the end of the war, Mikola Amosov developed new methods of treatment for injuries of the chest, and his team of surgeons conducted over 40,000 operations. After World War II, Amosov leads the operational department of Moscow's Glifosovsky Institute. Like a doctor from the province, he managed to take this position. But the prestigious place didn't fascinate him. There was a lack of surgical practice. He then got an invitation to work as a regional surgeon in Bryansk. He started working in the so-called thoracic surgery ward. 
created his own method of operations in this field of medicine and wrote a scientific book. After it was published, it became a classical textbook for many generations of doctors around the world. City on the hills of the Dnipro River, Kiev. In the 1950s, the capital of Soviet Ukraine was the second center of scientific and technical progress in the USSR after Moscow. In November 1951, Amosov reported on the results of his work at the Kiev Institute of Tuberculosis and Thoracic Surgery. Amosov's speech made a great impression on the director of the institute. Right afterwards, Mikola was offered to head a chest surgery clinic. Shortly after that, Amosov, together with his wife, moved to Kiev. But true recognition came to Amosov after he had started operating on the human heart. These were his first attempts to save the lives of children with incurable cardiac defects. You should not get in with kids before surgery. On Mondays, on doctor rounds, I just look at their chest and examine their heartbeat. I do not gaze into their faces. The post-surgery recovery period is quite a different thing. Only after surgery can I safely show my love for them. Mexico, nowadays, tens of thousands of tourists from all over the world flock there to visit ancient cities of Maya, unique monuments of architecture and art objects. And someone spends leisure time in front of TV screens, empathizing with the heroes of a never-ending Mexican TV soap opera series. In autumn of 1957, the International Surgical Congress was held in this country of the Latin American continent. It was the first journey of Amosov into the real world of capitalism. The delegation of surgeons consisted of 27 persons. Almost all members of the delegation were older than me, but I was ahead of them, considering my experience in performing surgeries. It was for the first time when Soviet surgeons were presented at such a major forum. An important event of the meeting was performing a surgery by using a heart-lung machine. I remember the five, six-story building of the State Cardiological Institute, a solid operation unit and a middle-aged typical Mexican doctor who operated on a 12-year-old boy. We transected his chest, isolated his heart inserted heparin and connected it on the heart-lung machine. After that, we inserted a pump to start the heart-lung bypass procedure. The surgeon successfully completed the operation. Right after that, Amosov ran to one of the local Mexican drug stores to buy plastic tubes on his miserable travel allowance. Later, he used them to construct his own heart-lung machine. The first successful surgery performed with the help of such know-how equipment was conducted in Ukraine in 1960. Sixties of the past century. The cultural revolution is flourishing in the West. Americans are losing their minds over Elvis Presley and Europeans discovered the Beatles. In the fashion world, the synthetic fabrics, like nylon, gain recognition. At that moment, Amosov dreamt of creating a heart valve. The Soviet Union lacked the necessary conditions, both information and technology, to achieve this goal. Amosov bought a nylon shirt in Italy, and soon this clothing item would become a highly popular commodity in the USSR. However, then the product of the foreign light industry inspired Amosov. The surgeon created a leap valve prosthesis using the shreds of such a nylon shirt. This was Amosov. He created the best from those details that he had. If there is something missing, he would find a way to make it anyway. The surgeon took the desperate and complex cases in his specialized sphere of medicine. The patients from all Soviet Union came to him in Kiev. It is said that a small city can be created from those people whom he saved. Nevertheless, every death he took is a personal defeat. 
even if he did everything possible to save the life of his patient. It is hard to process deaths, the sense of powerlessness and guilt. It is not the mistakes that slow me down, rather the system. For instance, yesterday we again had a negative result. An aneurysm of the ascending aorta. We desperately needed prosthesis for the whole arc. We started the heart, and at first the prosthesis held the blood, but then it leaked 1 liter per minute. We used 14 liters of blood and operated for 7 hours. So much pressure, nerves and everything in vain. We don't have anti-leakage prosthesis that are highly popular in the rest of the medical world. Amosov could not deal with his inability to save everyone. He tried to find the solution beyond the field of medicine. If I could establish the symptoms of illnesses through artificial intelligence, it could generate the efficient pattern of treatment, thought Amosov. In reality, there was only one computer that could manage such a task in Kyiv in the beginning of the 1960s. Finding the time for working with this electronic computing machine was extremely complicated. The scholar and his colleagues managed to document the case records and with punch cards they uploaded the data to a computer. I studied cybernetics in 1957 when I started to work in the field of heart surgery. We needed the diagnostics. Then I met people who worked on this subject area of cybernetics and they started to develop diagnostic machines. I was fascinated with it. We created a laboratory and my interest only grew in this fascinating and groundbreaking sphere of medical surgery. We had the model of a heart, then the model of other bodily organs, and then the intelligence, which I became interested in since the time that I studied Pavlov theories. Amosov saw the major goal of medicine in the structure that enables to regulate the human body. The scholar wanted to create artificial intelligence that could help treating people. A human being is a complex self-taught and self-assembled system. It works within a plethora of programs. If the development of the body is going along with the program, then the person is healthy. A disease is more of a program for its destruction due to certain biological, physiological and other factors. I'm convinced that artificial intelligence is possible and is capable of reproducing the functions of the human brain. In 1962, Amosov began writing books. It happened when a sick girl died on the operating table. His feelings raged and Amosov transferred his difficult working day to put ideas on paper. Here she is, so small, thin, on the large table with lovely braids on her head. Yesterday morning, her mother probably braided her daughter's hair for the last time. Her bows were knotted, no need to look, no I should, because death isn't an end to all. The surgeon gave this story to his friend, Ukrainian writer Yuri Dold Mihailik to read. He helped with its publishing in a magazine. Soon the book Thoughts and Heart appeared. It was instantly translated into 30 languages and quickly became a world bestseller. Then the notes from the future, the notes by a military surgeon, the Book of Happiness and Unhappiness, The Voices of Times, and The Thoughts on Health were printed in millions of copies around the world. But then Amosa faced problems with his heart. It suffered because he couldn't save everyone and was not able to find the best cure for human illnesses and age. I thought a lot and think again and again over thousands of complex operations and quite a lot of deaths. There are quite a number of deaths which I'm directly guilty of. No, it's not about murder. Everything shivers and protests inside me. 
After all, I deliberately took risks to save lives and did my best. People, cars, trolleybuses, 24 hours a day, the Mikola Mosov street sees the hustle of the big city. There are hospital buildings established by the famous surgeon nearby. Now it is the Amosov National Institute of Cardiovascular Surgery. The doctor headed this institute since 1983. I undertake every operation as if it were my relatives lying on the operating table. When Amosov turned 75, he decided to leave his post, but continued operating. He tried to save hearts, living behind his own. In 1992, I stopped operating. When I was almost 80, I began to notice that I was getting old. It became hard for me to walk, and I started to do special exercises. Within three months, my aging signs almost miraculously began to disappear. The severity with himself, his amazing sincerity, courage, and compassion for patients turned the hearts of many people towards Amosov. Perhaps being aged and after a serious operation, he challenged his age by inventing the system of intense physical limitation exercises. I didn't engage in physical exercises for satisfying my vanity. My health was not bad, but at the age of 40 my back became troublesome for me. An X-ray showed vertebra deformation. A professor orthopedist explained this by the long hours of standing over the operating table and prescribed fungal therapy to avoid serious problems. Instead of fungal therapy, I did a thousand actions a minute. From this, I began advocating the importance of the health of the human body. Training should be regular. Amosov introduced the concept of a physical load and limitation regime. He singled out three main points – food, physical education and self-management. According to Mikola Amosov, food should have a minimum fat content. It's necessary to eat about 300 grams of vegetables and fruits a day. The optimal weight formula less than 100 kg, having a height of 170 cm, a person's weight should be no more than 70 kg. Self-management or control over mind and body are the most difficult points. My complex of exercises is no better than all the other complexes. And if you run, it will be better than any complex. Don't think that I talk about something fundamentally new. Mikola Amosov was convinced that 90% of the world population does not live a healthy lifestyle and therefore they get sick. Perhaps such simple rules helped their author live to almost 90 years. But Amosov failed to win over age and illnesses. The irony is that the prolific and highly revered scientist died from an extensive myocardial infarction or heart attack on December 12, 2002. I lived my life. What was the most important in it? I think it was surgery. I worked honestly and freely. If it were possible to start life from the beginning, I would choose the same, surgery, and in addition, thinking of eternal philosophic questions of the truth, mind, man, society, and the ultimate future of humanity. All over the world, Mikola Amosov is considered the founder of heart surgery, biological, medical, and psychological cybernetics in Ukraine, founder of a heart surgery school in the USSR, methods of surgical treatment of heart diseases, and the author of an antithrombotic model of an artificial heart valve. This list is endless. This surgeon became the person who determined the image of Ukraine in the 20th century. He believed in human conscience, decency, professionalism, experience. He believed in wonderful machines and models that would help doctors save almost all patients. 
But he believed this also required faith, because only faith allows both a doctor and a patient to enter an operating room. Life is given man only once. Please forgive me for this exhausting and trivial phrase. Mikola Amosov